It's the next level. You know who that asshole was? Yeah, nobody. Hey panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this week, well, this episode, we just decided to do something out of the blue since uh, this past weekend we just got The Walking Dead Season 10 Episode A Certain Doom. So since, you know, of all things, this is a comic book to movies or shows of all things that we've never really topped on The Walking Dead. So since it took them uh, how many months to get this out <laughs> for the finale? What was it, like six or seven months? Uh, yeah, I'd say been, about there. It was supposed to be March, right? Yeah. Normally is when this, this would have aired and... Yeah, so we, we decided why not because a lot of hype's been going on. All three of us here are big Walking Dead fans. That's how we became friends and got to know each other because through Jason Cabassi's, uh podcast for Walking Dead cast and his Patreon, that's how we came to be and that's how we started podcasting. So we figured might as well jump in on the fun and at least do this one particular episode and give our thoughts on World Beyond, which came out. So nonetheless, we'll start into it. And obviously we're talking Walking Dead Season 10 episode A Certain Doom. And the synopsis for that is Beta engages the final battle of the Whisperer War. And that was pretty straightforward no surprises nothing there to like <laughs> oh we gave you some sort of hint or clue no basically yeah that's it that's all we get <laughs> <laughs> so what were you guys overall thoughts based upon the actual show the episode before we get into our top threes go ahead daphne ladies first all right thanks guys Thank you for, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on for this one. I'm really excited. Um, as Mark said, we met through a Walking Dead podcast, being fans of a podcast. So it's really cool to be able to break this one down with you guys. Overall, I thought the episode was decent. There were some things I wish had happened or maybe if the episode had been a little bit longer <laughs> because I felt like Beta especially Dessert, that fight I wish had been longer. I feel like it was too short. Oh, it definitely. <laughs> I wanted something, yeah. I guess, a little more theatrical for him because he's been such a great villain. And part of that duo with him and Alpha, I really look at as rejuvenating the show back to what I love about it, which is this sense of urgency and intensity. And I love that. So I really felt that that should have been longer. And yeah, I have some other thoughts, but you know, that's my overarching thought for this episode. Yeah, my my initial thoughts is because we waited so long to get this particular mm -hmm. episode. I was like, yes, it's gonna be great. It's gonna it's like and after a while it's like, no, no, okay. And it's exactly what I thought we would get, but it was something that we needed in what was it, March at that time. Uh, just after episode 15 and it would have been oh yeah that was great but now it's just like mm, you know it was okay i i got a a lot of what i wanted a lot of changes based upon comic to show format and that surprised me and i liked it a little less of maggie than what i wanted and a lot less of like you said Daphne about Beta and how he met his demise. And we'll go into the comic book versus show comparison because I think the show comparison to the comic was far better than the comic's ending because in the comic kind of just kind of felt weak. But that that's basically it. That's, you know, I, I thought it was an okay episode. I thought it was pretty decent, but it wasn't, it didn't blow my socks off at all. It was, it was pretty cool though, overall. 
Yeah, I kind of echo the, the same the same kind of thing. I know after the first watch, I was just blown away, and but then as I started to think about it, I kind of had the same uh, same thoughts you guys had that that fact that that it's because we waited so long for it that it's like they could have put poop on a plate and we would have we would have enjoyed it. Um, but uh, and that's not what they did. It was it, like you said, I you know it's a solid eight for me. If it's solid four, three and a half, four. If you're depending on what scale you're you're using um it's interesting you both say that about the the beta fight because if you haven't watched talking dead yet they actually talk about that fight mm -hmm. and that there was a lot that went into it so when we get into our top threes i'll i'll uh and notes i'll elaborate more on that or we can talk some more about what they said on on talking dead but uh yeah i echo a lot of the same thoughts that you guys had not enough maggie i really wanted to see more of her but i understand why we we didn't get more of her and hopefully in these next six episodes that we're supposed to get, hopefully we'll get more of, of Maggie. I don't know how contracts work. I don't know if they reworked contracts with this new, um, you know, reorganizing of the episodes. And I don't know what we're going to get. Hopefully, I, I think we'll take a portion of this podcast and talk about maybe what our hopes are for those six episodes and our, uh, our thoughts on it. Yeah, definitely. We should. Uh, all right. So this is a time when we should get into our top threes. So, Daphne, since you're our guest, you go first, and then Steve will go, and then I'll do mine. Okay. But not good. all three, remember? Three. Three? <laughs> so I just give you my number three. Yeah, do yes. your three, and then we'll right. do our three, and then we'll just go down the list. Yep. Okay, gotcha. So my number three was the introduction of the Commonwealth. The funny thing about that is I'm not a big fan of the Commonwealth storyline <laughs> in the comics. However... Wow. The fact that, I mean, they look like stormtroopers. They match so well to what the comic, the cover of the comic and what they're pictured as that I was blown away and excited about it, even though I'm still skeptical as to what will happen. I do have faith, though, that Angela Kang is going to deliver the story in a way that may be more exciting <laughs> and includes more good storytelling than what we got in the comic. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Plus, there's so many differences between what characters are here now and Well, the show is the show then. and the comic is the comic, just like Steve states. But they just gravitate towards certain story arcs and give them to different people. And then they kind of switch it up and in introducing completely new people. So yeah. that's what makes it a big difference. And so I, those, I enjoy so that. Those stormtrooper guys, the, that's the Commonwealth storyline from the comic. Correct. From, yeah, yeah they, that's for those. Okay, because a coworker asked me today, and I didn't know because I haven't read the comic and I hadn't heard anybody talk about this that scene yet. Um, so I didn't didn't realize that those are actually Commonwealth or comic book Commonwealth. We don't know what they're going to be called in this. Necessarily, I'm so. pretty sure they're going to call it the Commonwealth. I have a funny feeling, and not to spin off topic, but you know, we've already been seeing crm crm being as we know now is civic a civic republic military and mm -hmm. that's a completely different organization from what i could tell because if you look at them in the world beyond that particular first episode show them in dark black clothing that's the stuff mm -hmm. that fear introduced and with that one girl that uh what's her name encountered yeah, that Althea, Althea encountered, had encountered, had her, had yeah, with the helicopter with, yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So I think there's groups of these different militant style. So I think they're all sequestered in their own communities sporadically throughout the U.S. And I think the uh, CRM's part of that specific one, where it's the part of the main overall scheme of things, whereas the the Commonwealth's going to be more focused in on what the actual comic was. So I have a funny feeling the CRM is going to be the Rick movie thing, whereas the Commonwealth, we're going to just wrap that up as far as the show is concerned for the, its comic ties. And then who knows, maybe with, uh, what's her name, Ginny from Fear. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, she might not be involved in that, and she has her own little segregated community because we're starting to see masks and wackiness in that those uh, previews that we're getting, yeah. which honestly, folks, you, you might get something interesting 
next week when uh, Fear of the Walking Dead comes out because I'm going to be experimenting with something and I might just throw it up on our Panels to Pixels YouTube. So that'll yeah, I be like fun. The sound of that. So uh, that's a little bit of news later <laughs> on for fun. what we'll do for panels to pickles, just for fun because Mr. Kabasi himself actually challenged me to something, which is pretty funny. Ooh, and ooh. We, All right, that's exciting. So that's that exciting. So we'll great. see what that is. So Very like, cool. So who's next? My uh, me. So my number three is just all those aerial shots we got of of the medical complex, and then at the horde as it's going to the cliff, and and just it seemed like they did a lot of we we've seen these a few times in the the shows that they do these aerial shots, but I think they were used really well in this episode, especially that we got these wide shots showing us how big the horde is, how big that medical complex is. And then like the, the cliff itself and just what's going on. And so that really impressed me all those, that, like I said, I don't know if they use drones for those kind of things or how they do it, but it was really cool uh, camera shots. Yeah. I like the idea and the aerial shots that you could tell where, they needed that time with the effects for all this time in between during this whole pandemic that we've been involved in where they had to clear up and get all those effect shots in a lot of lighting on specific scenes that we've already seen before with previews with it, like even within the first 10 minutes of the movie or five minutes that we got and those that clip that we kept seeing over and over and over again throughout the summer as soon as it came out and I, you could see what work went in, into getting this out to what they wanted. And I, I really do appreciate that in that sense. And the aerial shots, like with the one with uh, Carol being on the cliff, mm -hmm. that was a really good shot. The aerial shot of the walkers where it's a whole swarm of them. So, yeah, I agree with you that that was I'm just loving the cinematography and what they did and the effects involved with that. Yeah. So my number three, well, I have to agree with Daphne. I have to switch things around. So basically, yeah, <clears throat> we get the Commonwealth arc, finally. So, But Norman Reedus mentioned that they were done with the comic storylines on The Talking Dead. Unfortunately, he was wrong because obviously we see those Stormtrooper-looking guys. And it just looked to me, even though it's so comic book accurate with the suits... It's like the Empire from Star Wars came in and was started <laughs> taking over. But as soon as I was like, oh, yes, I, I just literally got up and screamed when I first saw it on. And yes, I saw this Thursday night when they got a pre we got it uh, early when with AMC premiere, just like everybody now, else. Is it introduced the same way in the comic books with with uh, Eugene or somebody going off to other meet? people? Yes, they okay. they do okay. encounter. Yeah. So it's the same interaction. Uh, different people. Ezekiel's not there because and spoilers mm -hmm. for you who didn't read the comic. Ezekiel's dead. So yeah. he was one of the spiked head people. So basically, uh, this is a different kind of story in itself. Well, and, and I'm a little confused, too, because I thought, wasn't Georgie, didn't she say she was the Commonwealth, or did people think Georgie was from the Commonwealth, and that's where Maggie went? Yes. So yeah. maybe this is going to be a different, maybe they're going to take a different, you know, twist on Yeah, this can be a different than, direction. Than the comic books did. I think they've, I think they've shown that they can do that, that they have that, that uh, you know, that inspiration, that um, imagination that they can go, they don't have to, just because they're going to use exactly. a little piece from the comic book doesn't mean that it's going to be yeah, everything. It, it so. hasn't been comic book direct in years mm -hmm. in a sense where it reflected exactly certain scenes were taken like uh, i'll give a spoiler for a comic book situation this is the end of the whisperer war obviously father gabriel died during the whisperer war by beta by yes. being getting stuck coming down to warn people and he gets hung up upside down and his throat is slit and then his body is just torn apart by zeds yeah, we didn't get that at all, and yeah, nobody so suffered that that no. that mm -hmm. that attack, and we never saw it visually. Even though we had one where it was the tower, a, a, an episode called the tower, and we never got that, and we all assumed, yeah. and I assumed that we were <laughs> going to get that. And I thought, oh, well, maybe we'll get and it at the end. 
but nope. and that's what I'm saying is I think I, I think we we can we can dispense with the worry. You know, <laughs> the of, worry. Of, 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 My worry. Yeah, your worry or, or just <laughs> anybody's worry about oh they don't have enough imagination because I, I think they do. I think they they've shown us yeah. throughout these these last you know at least definitely the last four or five years I want to say at maybe you know maybe prior to Negan, but even then with with the Negan episodes with the deaths were that was different than what it was in the comic book even though mm-hmm. they, we had one similar death we didn't have another one and we've had a lot of things that they've done they've, they've been shown they've shown that they're willing to change it up and so i'm i have faith i have faith in them i have faith in these writers and i, I think we're gonna see something really good definitely up. yeah we never even got terminus in the the comic and to me that was oh. a great a great input that into the show itself wonderful. and it mm-hmm. It made everything really cool that 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 season when that ha- especially that one episode. <laughs> yes, that is my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite episode ever. I know I'm not the only one that loves. That oh, episode, I love it. But... it. That whole cow redemption of her coming after. Yeah, all right. we could go into that later. <laughs> so, yeah. We could. We definitely could. But I do love. I have to echo what Steve said. I do love what Angela Kang has done, especially the last two years. So. Yeah. I do have hope that this will. And she's been on definitely. the show as a writer and influencer on the show since like season two, I think. So, yeah. you know, to me, that was the perfect person to throw into the main show. Leave Gimple aside for a little bit for other things. But <laughs> I feel like she's a fan of the show. She is. And, and she has actually said that on occasion. And I feel like that definitely comes across. Mm-hmm. In the episodes, because I'm a fan and watching it, I am just feeling like, ooh, she really knew exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Not all the time, but but a good part of the time, she really delivered. I mean, and she had such a tough job with having to deal with Andrew Lincoln's departure mm-hmm. yeah. so and how to handle that. So I, I do have faith in her. Well, I do too. So we're on to your number two, Daphne. All right. My number two. Well, it's kind of a hodgepodge, well, hodgepodge of a few things. <laughs> Some of it has to do with Lydia and talking to Negan about how he could be a hero, even though he didn't seem to think so or want to be. Mm. And also Lydia and Carol's dynamic, mm-hmm. because I feel like she really was trying to get Carol to talk to her, to not be her mother, but just to be just someone, I guess, to guide her. Confide, because- yeah. To confide in because she realized that her mother was never really the mother that she needed or wanted or in any way. And so I think Lydia is just really looking for adult people in her life, maybe female adult people in her life that she can look to to help, you know, guide her growth because she's really had no direction other than following what her mother wanted, Mm -hmm. which we all know was really off the rails. Mm. So... I think that whole arc between Lydia and Carol, the entire story going all the way to the end where Carol is prepared to walk off the cliff and Lydia doesn't let her. And then they sort of go in amongst these rocks and cry. I feel like they had this bonding moment. Yeah. Also Um, in the fact that at that point, I think Carol was like, I have nothing really to live for. I've lost so many children, all her kids. She thinks of uh, the two girls she thinks of her son, Sophia. All these kids just are gone. And, and I think when she looked at Lydia, she didn't see, she didn't want to be a mother to her. And when mm-hmm. Lydia brought that up to her, she had nothing mm-hmm. really to go for exactly. Not even, you know, Daryl was like on her mind or whatever. Like, not even Ezekiel, even to some degree, even though they've been broken up. I think mm-hmm. it's for the fact that I think it was as close to the Carol Starry arc in the comic that we could ever get, where in the comic earlier on, you're talking within the, what, the first 15, 20 issues, she winds up suggesting like a threesome with Rick and his yes. wife, Lori, <laughs> and then next thing you know, yes. she literally lets a, a walker bite her and just tear her apart. Yeah, this- this yeah. Carol is very different than the Carol. Very the, different. The but the very fact different. is it showed a moment of weakness, but somebody was able to pull her from it to show hope for 
a different life. Maybe she'll go to Mexico with Daryl. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> she very well could. This was this was one of my few criticisms of the episode was this this very convenient hole with a rock uh, over it so that no walkers <laughs> will fall into them and no walkers. This was one of my one of my you know the How hand convenient. of God moments going oh. Yeah, oh, there's this little hole right here where Carol happens to be standing, and there happens to be a rock <laughs> over top of it. And none so of the that... sets go after her yeah. as Lydia is pulling her to her yeah. to get into that set well, hole. They didn't, they didn't make any sound. I, I you know, I, I was okay with that because we we saw them move through the herd yeah. silently. As long as they as long as they they didn't they didn't make any noise, they were fine. Yeah. But it just that convenient hole. Just it it that was one of my few kind of mm, come yeah. on. I got moments. you. Well, I still. I still don't think, though, that Carol has, like, resigned herself to be a mother figure for Lydia. Oh, no. I, I don't think so. I don't think that this was about them being mother-daughter. I think it was Lydia seeing that Carol was near the end. And I think Lydia does feel this connection to Carol. And she didn't want to see her do that. And maybe she wanted to show her there was more to live for. Um, I'm not sure. I do get the part about the convenient rocks. Yeah. <laughs> totally get that um one more thing about this scene though that i loved is watching uh lydia throw alpha's mask mm -hmm. over with all the others the way that that flow i mean just the cinematography of how it floated down it just yeah. to me was so impactful and the music too the music in this episode oh. was really good at that point bear mccreary and who was the other person we were talking about the other night oh can't remember his name off the top of but my head. regardless it the the music in itself had that eerie tone throughout certain scenes uh, th that was really cool about this i think yeah we're not going to hear that beta tone anymore that urgent you know da, da. there's just this little thing in the music that always played for the whispers <laughs> especially for beta and i really liked it very true so steve what's your number two well, my number two is just really, really quick. It's just uh, the return of, of Maggie, and I just I, I love the hat. I love just the whole the the whole thing. You know, we've seen it for months. Like you said, we saw these first whatever eight minutes or ten minutes. We saw those uh, months ago uh, during the Comic Con or even before that. I can't remember when they released that. So we knew she was going to be in the episode. We didn't know that she was going to have such a pitiful role. And this is, this is my second kind of hand of God moment uh, in the episode is that they show up exactly right when they're needed yeah. uh, to save Gabriel. It's a little, yeah, come on. Um, I, I thought there were more, the, the, the confusion that I had, and I'll tack this on to my number two is I thought we were given the impression in the first 15 episodes that there were a lot of whisperers like that. The whisperers way outnumbered. Yeah. Our, our like a group. huge horde that was going to be there within yeah. this yeah, big like horde with, of zombies. Within the horde of zombies. There yeah. was going to be a lot of, of whisperers. And yet in this episode, we get them kind of cleaned out fairly easily. Really. Or filtering I mean, inside. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they kill like three or four of them right at the, you know, Gabriel kills like three or four of them right there at the beginning. And then he's being attacked and three, more and then that's it and i guess we're supposed to assume that aaron and snake eyes and maggie killed the rest on their way up but then also daryl makes that comment we're going to go back into the horde or we're going to hunt down the whispers and we're going to kill them all mm. and we don't really see that that's kind of off that's taken off screen to where all of a sudden now we have all of our group is just yeah, we're good. We got everybody. And uh, it wasn't was in the budget, Steve. You didn't get that memo. No, I just I, it, like I said, it was just one of those things. That I, I just kind of maybe I understand that they they were they had to do things kind of on the fly with COVID, and yeah. And so maybe there, there well, actually was this going was be, done before COVID at that point, right? But I'm saying maybe they yeah. maybe they were going to try to fill something in. I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying to give them reasons why this tactic <laughs> would work, where because it's. Anyway, so, but yeah, I know just the return of Maggie. Yeah. I loved all everything about that, and just uh, a few little issues with uh, with the end of this whisperer skirmish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I have to agree with that too. With that it would be my number two as well as that Snake Eyes guys coming in with Maggie at the last minute. And yes, I'm referring to Maggie has some sort of mute ninja assailant just like snake eyes and gi joe <laughs> that that i thought was pretty yes. awesome he's got the the commas loved it. and loved it. that is nothing that i have seen in the comic and i'm really really loving it the only thing closest to that would 
would be Jesus when he came in into the comic, you know? And mm. even though it's a, a little over the top, especially with the way that Aaron looks at him <laughs> after he saves yes, Father Gabriel, I noticed that sly look. But the guy is very mute, and he's got that like whole Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe element, and I just love that yeah. idea. I'm, I'm hoping they don't give him a backstory. Maybe Maggie just say says, oh, he, he can't speak because he got injured in his in his throat well, we don't know that either that's speculation as well yeah we just, but, we just didn't hear him speak during this episode but i know, would just all. love it if that were right. the case so that way it's like yeah he's just a mystery and that would be awesome to me i'll be like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it looks like and just keeps everybody kind of black noir and the boys mm -hmm. as we're going to yeah. be talking about a lot this season steve yeah. <laughs> yep. exactly so we're on to our uh number ones daphne all right well this shouldn't be a surprise, <laughs> but my number one is all things beta, <laughs> just because I, right from the beginning, uh, Ryan Hurst was the person I wanted to play this role, and when I found out he was playing it, I was ec ecstatic that he was going to have it, um, have the role, because I loved watching him on Sons of Anarchy, and I just felt like he could bring the stature and the intensity that the role mm -hmm. required. And so Franny McTwo Knives, which is who he is to me from the com <laughs> from the comic, I was so excited, and I think that Negan actually said called him Franny McTwo Knives. Once he did. He in did. The show and yeah. Yes, and I I might have screamed at that point, but um, he is no more. I I just while I liked how he went out, I thought it was cool. I just feel like overall the. End of the Whisperer War, considering all the menacing behavior that went on with the Whispers, mm -hmm. that this episode needed to be another 30 minutes longer. A little, and that's I what I was saying earlier, is a little anticlimactic that we just kind of, okay, it's done. Yeah, well, you know? I, yeah. It's, it also uh, goes back to when we had to deal with All Out War for two years. And I think at that point, they were like, we can't really stretch this out anymore because we've already upset our viewers at this point with just dealing with Negan and his overbearing dictating rule and <laughs> we these a lot of people like the whispers on some of them don't so let's get this story arc done so we can move on and, and that, that could have yeah been, that, yeah and they wanted to move on to the commonwealth they actually, to change it a little Dead, I, I, I don't know if you guys had watched talking dead I watched yet, some of it but, um, they they talked about that scene between Ryan Hurst and, and Norman Reedus. Uh, they kind of talked about, they went around and right, that Ryan Hurst kind of wanted a bigger fight scene. Yes, he wanted he a longer, more, uh, more fight scene, but that Norman Reedus kind of put in the idea of, well, let's make it more quick because we've already had this big knife fight between the two of them and let's have, let's reverse the roles. Let's have Daryl save Negan, whereas Negan saved Daryl mm -hmm. the other the other time, and uh, and then this whole idea of him kind of jumping up and, and stabbing the knives down into his his eyes. I, I think they kind of abandoned the whole jumping thing because they ended up putting Beta on his knees. But uh, <laughs> I, I liked it. I I thought I thought it was perfect. I um you know I didn't I didn't think it was too short. I I appreciated um. Just that whole that whole move of of stabbing down between the eyes and uh, missing and like even Norman points out the fact that he said he, that he he talked about that about he wanted to stab in a downward motion so that he missed the brain so you could have that scene of Beta being attacked by the the walkers and not and not uh, and kind of being there so I liked it that is one moment that I will say I I thoroughly enjoyed I I wasn't I wasn't uh, mad about it being short mm. I thought it was really great awesome I just thought that the lead into it should have been longer I feel like it was like oh and it's over <laughs> but the cool thing though I will say is trying to determine when Beta is seeing what's really happening and what's happening mm -hmm. in his head. And the back and it, forth. It got in this a little episode, bit confusing, yeah. It was confusing at times. I mean, when he's kind of he's been stabbed in the eyes and he's standing there and it's like his whole flock is just coming to worship mm -hmm. him. And then all of a sudden Oh that's not really what was going on. And then he's devoured, which I think is the perfect end for him yeah. because I mean th that's just who he is. So it it is perfect and 
I just wish it had been just a little bit longer. I did like one part, though, that it thought it looked like Lydia was walking through wearing Alpha's mask. And I think that tripped him up. I think that threw him off his game yeah. mm. a little bit because he I don't think he expected his, to mm -hmm, see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I had a lot of thoughts about that moment of do you think Lydia was actually trying to escape and she changed her mind when Carol spotted no. her, or was she specifically Not looking enough. for Carol and the group I, to join up with them? I think she just wanted to join up with them, and when Carol spotted her, she knew her right away. To me, for a second, I'm like, who's this whisperer that's coming up behind her? And then I realized, oh, that's Lydia. Mm -hmm. And yep. and then yeah. she kind of moved in, and everybody gave her that look of like, wow, she's here. And then she offers up the, uh, let's help the, uh, because the herd and everything so they could go over the cliff and be like lemmings but you know well she came up big for them in this mm -hmm. episode too by pointing out which people in the cra in the horde of zombies were whispering. exactly well she, she grew up, up in that element so she knew so she knew and, who they were yep yeah so steve you're number one yeah, just the, the return of Virgil and I you know, I was waiting the whole episode to see if we would we would see Connie's fate because that's been the big question mark, right? For ever since whatever that <laughs> yeah. cave in episode was, the big question mark has been is Connie alive? Is she dead? Is she in the horde? Is she what you know, we saw Magna and the others that kind of looked like walkers almost coming out of the horde. And uh, you know, there's that moment with between Daryl and is it is it Magna, right? When um he asks her, Are you gonna be okay? Yes. Going back into the horde. Yes. Because because he knew that this could be triggering for her because she spent so much time there. So it was just really cool to see Connie, to see her wake up and to see her stumbling through the forest and then uh, for Virgil to find her because we don't know much about this guy. We And this is another thing that Norman Reedus brought up during Talking Dead is that uh, he kind of likes the character of Virgil because it is – there's kind of a mystery there. I mean we know he kind of had a crazy moment there on the island with Michonne where yeah. he was he was killing his own people or locking up his own people and uh, so he's he's kind of got that crazy side to him but he's at the got, same time yeah he's got that morgan element to him i think and that's what i got the feeling of him after a while he's the wannabe morgan and now he's going to help out connie at this point and when connie if you look at her she had a really bad hair day when she came out <laughs> Oh, uh, all that dust and everything she and her being deaf and not being able to talk obviously the only thing that gives her is her looking around that shows that she's real so good thing he didn't bat her over the head or something mm -hmm. well because she looked really really bad yes yeah. It, yeah it was it was not good um my fiance actually asked me who is that <laughs> he didn't know who it was and um, so I had to explain it to him. And that one thing about Magna, you were mentioning her walking through the horde, her face, like the entire time, there was just this look of like PTSD or stress. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could tell that she was. That fear was there. The fear was there as they would walk by and brush up against her. I mean. Oh, and so was Kelly, too. And Kelly had the mask on. And that, that mask actually, that mask looked incredible. great on her. And it was incredible with the with everything with the lighting and everything i mm -hmm. thought it looked amazing with her behind daryl and them moving in between those scenes were really really good so on to my number one which the look everyone has during the bug out from hilltop which pretty much is that scene very reminiscent of season six episode nine and we've seen this before in this case beatrice is the the one that gets killed in the daylight mm -hmm. instead of that pain in the ass kid that carol <laughs> was like trying to trick with cookies and oh goodness <laughs> sam yeah, yeah. poor uh, sam yeah. but there's always one casualty it's kind of a trope it's something we have seen before but yeah. in this case i liked it for the fact it was in the daylight and it was everybody working together but there are other hilltop red shirts that do get killed during this time within this, especially during the wagon mm -hmm. train. If you think about it with uh, burning down a house, playing down mm -hmm. by the yes. talking heads. Loved, loved that. And, you know, <laughs> it was really impactful. And I'm glad that they got music back on the show again because it's been so long since we had any, uh, like, strange music like that every once in a while. Yeah, I think the guy that died, the hilltop guy, I think his name was Oscar. 
Yes. The one that, that they killed, yeah. It looked like Oscar, yeah. Yeah. Um, not the Oscar from season two in the prison, but no. a different Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> different Oscar. He's long yeah. been gone. <laughs> yeah, it's a different Oscar. And did Luke, I, I, I didn't, I... Which one was Luke's love interest? Was that wasn't Beatrice, right? No, his, right. No, his his kind of survived, right? So yes. we still have that. Jules, is that, yeah. okay, Jules. Okay, I couldn't yeah. remember which one was his, and I, I didn't. At the end with the reunion, I was so focused on Maggie and Judith's uh, reunion that I didn't even look at anybody else. Really, I saw, um, gosh, King Ezekiel's guy Jerry. I saw Jerry, you know yes. Jerry's reunion with his family and uh, and that, but I, I wasn't sure about Luke. So that's that's good. I, I'm glad with that. Yeah, Luke actually got to hold hands with Jules. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very good. Walking he, out there. Yep. Yeah. And he got to put some like guts on her back. Yeah. And... <laughs> That's dating in the in the apocalypse. And I guess so. It's That's it. Foreplay. It's dating. <laughs> I will say this. I will say this. I was thinking about this when I was rewatching the episode. Mm. Those whispers. They really needed a chiropractor. I mean, who <laughs> is going to fix the back issues that they have from being hunched over and, you know, kind of walking and shambling along? I mean, just watching Beta when he first goes into mode so he can start shambling, mm-hmm. it's like, oh. Yeah. yeah. You Cox need a chiropractor. The, the head to the side and kind of, yeah. Yeah. Does this weird thing with his shoulders and, yeah. Yeah. It definitely, I, I was just thinking... Whispers need a chiropractor. He needs a good back stretch or somebody to pop his back a little bit every Yoga, once in a while. maybe. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, Ryan Hurst does a lot of meditating and things of that nature. So <laughs> I think that prepared him for it. <laughs> all right. On to notes that we all have. I only have one because I think I brought up like half of the other things that I heard he had. But uh, Daphne, if you want to go on okay. with your... Um, okay, so I may have an unpopular opinion here. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Um, so Maggie saved the day for Gabriel, mm-hmm. which was nice to see. However, and even though I actually like the character of Gabriel now, mm-hmm. I feel like him going out there would have been a great ending to a character arc. Yes. I, I like that you, I'm glad you brought this up. I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish. (laughs) Well, (laughs) the thing is, he remember at St. Sarah's Church and he locked his Mm -hmm. parishioners out and he was this coward and just just this meek little man who he really was not courageous or strong in any way. I meant to put this in my notes, but totally forgot. So I'm glad you bring this up because I really was wanted this to be one of my points and uh, is just the, the sacrificial non sacrifices that we had, because we have, we have Gabriel saying, I'm going to sacrifice myself so that everybody everybody else can be saved. And then he doesn't need to do it. Mm -hmm. And then we have Carol the same way. Carol saying, I'm going to, I'm willing to sacrifice myself and Oh no, I don't, I don't have to do it. So it it was really kind of a, a, almost a theme of, seeing those people that were willing to die, uh, but then didn't have to. So I, I wonder if that's going to come up later, later on. I wonder if, if Rosita is ever going to find out that, what do you mean? You were, you were going to sacrifice yourself? What? <laughs> you know? Poor Rosita. Um, I mean, really everything she's been through Yeah. with everyone she's lost. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, so really, I... are you thinking about being a hero when, the woman that you supposedly love has lost everyone. Correct, yeah. And needs mm-hmm. you. You're not thinking about being a father, you know, a husband and father. Right, You're... right. Well, so I did know Rick. this is the... True. Look what Rick did on the bridge. Yeah. He wasn't thinking. Yeah. He wanted, oh, yeah. no, no. Yep. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Don't, so, uh, don't, don't. And then he shoots and boom, he's gone. <laughs> and, it, and it's gone. So I, yeah, so I really... Though I didn't want him to die, I just feel like what a great arc to see him be courageous mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, and yeah. step forward. Because he really, to me, didn't start changing until the Negan stories. Like when yes. Negan came around, and then it was like, okay, who is this Gabriel? This is right. a Gabriel that I could like. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I feel like this would have been the such an amazing arc for him to go out in that way. So I was a little disappointed that, I guess... Maybe a little disappointed that he didn't go out there, but I was yeah. happy, you know, that Maggie saved the day. I just found it very convenient. And yeah, well, and, and that's kind of the same thought I had as Carol is walking towards the cliff. I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, 
something's going to happen because we know we've already been spoiled that there's going to be a Carol and Daryl <laughs> spinoff. Yes. True. So yeah. obviously, unless it's zombie <laughs> Carol that's going to be in the spinoff. Yeah, it's like, yeah, hold um, on, Carol. I got yeah, yeah, I got to yeah. the chains. <laughs> you know, yeah. something's, uh, something's going to happen that's, that's going to save her. But I, I did have a tense moment there at, uh, thinking, what is going on? How is this going to work? And uh, uh, so, yeah, very good. Yeah, I think uh, they loved Seth Gilliam's character, the the writer. So I think they just loved the idea of having Seth around. <laughs> and plus, with what we know about Christian Serratos, she's uh, supposedly set to play Selena. So there was that whole idea when we lost another character a few years ago, and she went to Star Trek. So yes. I, I have a funny <laughs> feeling... It's like, all right, well, we might lose Rosita, but we'll still have Father Gabriel and the baby. Hmm. So yes. who knows? We, uh, this is all speculation, but we've already seen this before where an actor has gotten another job and then they were killed off like mm -hmm. two episodes later. Yeah. And we got that it's information. It's hard, too, to see that when you have a character who's been on the show since season five. Because we've lost so many of the early characters. Yes. That... How many can you really lose before the fans are just kind of like, well, this isn't even the same. Well, they're keeping mm -hmm. a couple of the OGs. You you got Daryl yeah. and you got Carol. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, really. That's that's really all we have for the very beginning. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had a couple of notes that we haven't talked about. I really loved the the general sense of hope that uh, Ezekiel was given, even though we know Ezekiel has this carbuncle on his shoulder uh, that, <laughs> that, uh, that he's not long for this world, or maybe, maybe the Commonwealth has a way, maybe these a cure. people that could cure, I don't know. But I really like that, that hope they were giving to Eugene and then you meet uh, uh, Yumiko and princess. They kind of join in on that hope as, as well. And then even, even uh, Eugene picks up on it there at the very end before they get, you know, captured or whatever is going to happen to them. We don't know. So, yeah. And then I loved Luke's little, he, when he said, uh, he kind of knocked on his head gesture when he was talking about, uh, about the plug and stuff. He said, I'm going to plug stuff in and then, and uh, then this is all going to work. And he went like, he didn't actually say <laughs> knock on wood, yeah, I know. but he, he knocked on his head. And I thought that was, that was really funny. So mine, well, since you already went through it, I love the whole idea of Ezekiel giving hope to, Eugene because he's known he's done so much wrong over the years but he decided I wanted to do this so I could meet this woman meet a different community give hope and he started losing it to the point where he even started feeling like there's no hope for this and maybe we are getting set up at this point and I don't want to do any more and then the fact that he gets that pep talk from Ezekiel and of all things Princess and Kumiko and I thought that was really endearing for the fact that the character, a lot of people were hating on him ever since he did that whole, you know, Saviors thing back, what, mm -hmm. two or three seasons ago. Uh, I think it was two seasons ago. But regardless, it, to me, I love that idea. The only note that I could show that's new, uh, the Back to the Future reference that Luke does during the discussion <laughs> of leading away the pack of walkers with the music oh. and everything. I left as soon as he... <laughs> Gave that gesture of making the connections of yeah. the the like the connector points for music or something, and that was straight out of like a did he just make a Doc Brown reference right there? <laughs> so. That's good. I didn't pick up on that. I didn't see that until you just uh, just showed me. So it's a I, I I did not put that together, but that is kind of cool. Yeah, we we did a live watch party uh, viewing of it last night when it was on show with uh, a bunch of people who are friends on zoom so i brought that up and alex was just like wait wow you caught that and i was like yeah i just <laughs> i just realized that now i had already seen the movie the show already so but i thought it was pretty cool i was like he just made a cool pop culture reference <laughs> <laughs> we need those interwoven amongst everything sometimes mm -hmm. i feel like the writers do that just to make sure we're paying attention oh yeah <laughs> All right, so we finished with notes, or did you have any, Daphne, that you wanted to divulge um, more let me of? check real quick, but I think... I think we covered everything I got. Oh, there was one thing, one thing that I thought was a little bit strange. Carol, mm -hmm. when Beatrice went down, mm -hmm. her first inclination was, 
I've got to get the backpack off and get it to Carol. Like, this mm-hmm. is what I need to do. Mm-hmm. Carol looked at her like she was already lost. Like, Carol looked already lost. lost. Yep. Yeah. Already yep. lost. Like, she didn't know what to do. I and think she was goodness- getting flashbacks from, like, season, what was it I was saying? What was it? Season six, episode nine? Could be. So think about it, because she was within that crowd, and that kid was killed, and Carl got his eye shot out. Oh, goodness. It's, it's all fun and games till yeah, Carl it, gets his eye shot out. <laughs> I, I think, I really think you're right. I think part of it was Carol was just, she forgot for a moment that Luke was very specific, that he needed everything. Every single piece. They were, yeah, every single piece that we have has got to come and get to where we're going because if it doesn't i can't complete this thing and so beatrice recognized that i've got to give somebody my pack Correct. and uh, so i i really am glad i i was i was kind of worried about that for a second the second time i watched it or the, the first time i watched it because i was like wait a minute doesn't she need that and yes. uh, so when, when i saw carol go back and get it i was like okay good Carol didn't get it. Lydia got it. Oh, that was Lydia who grabbed it. Now yeah. I know. Yeah. Carol yeah. kept okay. Carol kept, kept walking. walking on to the woods. Yep. Okay, good. Thank and you. Thank you. That I clears up for me. Yeah. Just was like, oh, we're going back to the Carol who's kind of lost again because we keep going back and forth. I like Carol when she's at her best and oh, she's that, ready yeah. to kick butt, but yeah, well, she, shows yeah, that shows an even deeper arc for her character in yeah. this in this episode then because Lydia it does show us that you're okay now I'm now I'm tracking because it was Lydia was wanting to hook up with them and so she got Beatrice's backpack. Yeah. yeah. Carol sees her and then Carol brings her into the okay. Yeah. And then at the end, okay, that makes so much more sense. I thought it was Carol Mm-mm. that went back and then I thought Lydia just had a backpack on had her like her own backpack. No, no, no. Oh, I okay. realized that she that was had her backpack. Beatrice's yeah. backpack. She got okay. and Beatrice really was fighting. Like you could tell she mm-hmm. knew she was going out. She knew that it was over. But she knew that the bigger picture was making sure that they could escape from there. Which meant they needed to get the backpack to the rest of the group, gotcha. so that Luke could put it to get put everything together and make it work. And so, I just was like, Carol, why are you even out there? Like that you makes were just so much more sense to me lost. now. Then okay, yeah. yeah, that makes so much more sense to me now. So, yeah, Good. I think that's the last thing on my notes. I just really wanted to point that out because when I rewatch it today, it. The second time around, it was the same thing. It's like, wow, she just looks like she doesn't even know where she is. Yeah, and I missed I missed doing a third rewatch of it because I I think I might have I might have picked up on that that it was Lydia who grabbed the bag. I really didn't realize that was the bag that Lydia had was Beatrice's bag. So yeah, I found okay. it strange too that Negan kept Alpha's mask. Uh, well, you know, they shared that one Negan. time with their socks on in the woods. <laughs> that's, that's true. Stop. Stop. That is true. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So we can move on to some quotes. I only have one, and I think, Daphne, you'll have one, too. I do. So I'll start with mine. Uh, as they're prepping to go out there and put on the do the guts thing and go into the crowd of zombies. Daryl sees that Negan's there and he goes, huh, why are you clean? And he goes, Negan just turns around and goes, I'm on the tip top of every skin's kill list, especially fee fi fo asshole. So if the idea is to get through without drawing a shitload of attention, then I am the last person these people want standing next to them. Sorry, I had a you know, get my Jeffrey Dean. That Morgan was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. And I and I have to wonder, they didn't want Lydia out there with them. I mean, Beatrice was of like, all people. Well, mm-hmm. We don't want Lydia out there. They certainly would not have wanted Negan, <laughs> Negan out there. No, either. right? Exactly. Exactly. Come on. It's like, was he there? I have her head. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Not at all. And these still hurt feelings too, because uh, Diane was kind of like frustrated with carol saying oh yeah he was attacking hilltop with the whispers and mm-hmm. it's yeah like carol had to do what carol had to do and things are over because of it we lost people but we probably would have lost a lot more well diane not. knew that carol was responsible for negan yeah. being out there and that's why she was pissed off at carol yeah yeah I I, get it. 
we're still on the the Negan redemption. I think there's still some some redemption for for oh, Negan, and, and he definitely yeah. showed it in this in this episode when he did go out after them. He gives he gives Lydia the mask. He sends her out, and that was I don't have a quote because I don't remember directly how he said it. But you know when they're having that discussion, he and Lydia, she says you can be a hero, and he says, well maybe that's what I'm doing when he gives her the, the mask. mask. Yes. and then we yeah. do know that he does end up in the horde, and because he saves he calls out to beta there in the middle of the horde he does so. and funny you mentioned that because that's the quote i'm gonna bring up <laughs> Go ahead. It was after daryl puts beta out of his misery or rather sinks him into his misery <laughs> negan says uh to daryl at the end holy shit you know who that asshole was because you know what negan knows that it's that i think that he's called half moon or yeah. I think that was the name of the singer. Yeah, yeah it was. And Daryl says, yeah, nobody. I'm like, that's so typically Daryl. <laughs> but also, <laughs> that's a kind of a twist and spin on the comic, because everybody yes. knew that Beta in the comic was a basketball star. And then how he went out with more of a whimper than with a bang, because he literally... All, Aaron was on top of him and just cut his throat and then yeah. they just left him for dead to, for the dead to eat him. And in this yeah. case, he went out and uh, try like some sort of moment of glory, even though it's like, wow, that was a bit a little extreme with the through the eyes and everything. <laughs> yeah. But regardless, it's like at least with the show, they gave him a more of a glorious style. And even though it was really short. Whereas with the comic, it was kind of like it, you, we built up on this character of being so ominous, the biggest bad in the world that is Alpha's second hand man uh, or right hand man, I should say. And he goes out like a whimper. And with this, the show did some pretty good things with it, I think. Agreed. I think it was much better on the show as far as like the way he went out. And mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was a great testament, I think, because of. How amazing I think Ryan Hurst has been in this role. I think it was cool to ha see him go out, his character go out in a way like this, I think. I just wish it, the fight itself, and just a <laughs> bit longer. Or even the Whisper War, not the Whisper War, but the whis the end of the Whisper War mm -hmm. had been a little more exciting, I guess, or more action-packed, because I guess that's what I was expecting, but with the Whispers and how slow they shamble i guess i shouldn't have thought that well i'm <laughs> curious to well we'll move on to other notes that we want to see what's going into with the show as it comes now obviously the whisper war is ending the commonwealth story is going to come into play will the whispers that are left over that have nobody to lead them will they come there are no whispers left over they killed well, them all. They, you think they you did, think but I'm not 100% sure that they well, all maybe. died. I mean, don't you think, though, if there had been, oh, maybe, I guess, I and guess no I can And no one's going to know, you. Steve. Kind of You're like right. the because, Savior yeah. situation where the Saviors got moved into Hilltop and yeah. Alexandria. No I just I just think this is, this is, and I'm just, I'm, I'm going to call it, this is done. This storyline is done. It, it should be, yes. I, I don't blame you, yeah. We're not going to have... You know, some ex whisperer show up <laughs> uh, because even if they did, Lydia would be the only one who might recognize them, right? Maybe, maybe. You know? So Cause remember, just... Lydia didn't recognize Dante, right? Very that's true. what I'm saying. Is is I just I just think I, I want us I want the show to move. I guess what I'm saying is I want the show, show to move to on, move forward. Yeah, I yeah. Don't it want should. us to go back. backward. I don't, yeah. I don't need us to have a. Oh, it's the return of the whispers, or it's the return of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, we don't I, want, I want the show to move. Forward. I agree I with you. You know, yeah. agree. We don't there want. There could be some left out there, but you know, Daryl was pretty clear that the only way they were going to get that horde to shift was if they got rid of all the whispers, because that's what he said. He said we got to go in there yeah, and get them find all, all out. the skins kill them all and then we can move this horde so you know i guess maybe some of them would have survived and maybe they would have saw that they were it was a losing battle i just don't i don't think i think that cult was too strong mm -hmm. that i don't think they would have gone oh this is a losing battle we're just gonna we're gonna hide in the in the horde because then they would and, and slip off into the darkness or or whatever i just don't i don't see that but yeah it was kind of cool how they killed them off too like Beta was standing in the middle and he'd hear a scream and he'd turn around and you'd see like the back of someone who would just slit somebody's throat or whatever. Or Diane hitting somebody with an arrow. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. very and then, and cool. Then, yeah, it was. It was. And, and I love that, 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 that 
that whole thing of them using the whispers tactics basically against them. Yeah. Yes. Doing the exact same thing that the whispers were doing to them. Sometimes yep. that's what you have to do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're right, Steve. I don't think we're going to see somebody that's a whisper called Psy Gamma Nu come out of nowhere <laughs> and say, Hey, I was a whisper. I want to be with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably not. So probably not. Well, let's move on to a little bit of news, but it's going to go into kind of like a short review of what we saw already. So, not only did The Walking Dead and came back, and that's news in itself, but we also got a new show following it called World Beyond. So I, I think we should discuss our first impressions of this based upon the original show and fear. I I think it's an is interesting story arc where you got these people who are sheltered and these kids that are brought up. Uh, I like the uh, the beginning imagery where we see kind of like a cartoonish or comic booky thing on the zombies' faces when it shows the first beginning of the show. Very reminiscent of what we saw in Snowpiercer with the comic booky edge yes. with certain mm -hmm. scenes when we've seen that before when we reviewed that. The character structures are pretty cool. You have two sisters. Uh, you got some quirky, wacky kid that loves corduroy and goes out beyond, you know, kind of. I kind of like him. I think he's <clears throat> interesting. So you got all these different things. It was like the boy's like a Lydia. He jumps over the, you know, sneaks out. And you got the one goofy kind of kid that comes along and all that stuff. They're looking for a father. Uh, we see a little bit more, get a little bit more information on the CRM. I found that interesting. Uh, the one thing that was too predictable was the psychiatrist that Iris goes to. And <laughs> I knew that was coming. She's got the cages yeah. already there. And she goes, oh, that's for them when they're ready to come and get me. And then the kid had to see it. And I knew that was coming. And then, uh, and of course, with the CRM being the big bad. Uh, yeah. That was too obvious, but <clears throat> and then there, there was the setup of the kid with the corduroy, and you knew that his mother was the one that the sister killed oh or my something. Gosh. So there, to me, it was overall, but there was a lot of too predictable plot points, in my opinion. They made it a little fast, made it a little bit interesting to capture our attention. I give this like a seven out of ten, and usually I give like walking dead a good like between eight and nine fear yeah. is always usually going to be around eight but i i do that for the comedic portions of it <laughs> but you know i i still give fear its credit because of the actors in that show and i give the the kids credit in this show because they are doing well as well i'd have to agree on a lot of that i do question when the when i was first seeing some of the ads for this show i did question mm -hmm. well is this going to be the young adult version of walking dead for yeah. the teens and you know saved by the bell 20s? for the Z yeah. Head society yeah but i think the ending of this first episode if you look at what it looks like is they annihilate i don't know if they killed everyone in that campus yes that's, that's what i gather that's what i, I gather too I, I it looked to me like they killed that entire campus yep and we're like okay the security because and this this is one of the i'll, I'll bring up a point that you didn't make that kind of bugged me mark what was the fact that the two main security people when these kids leave the two main security people go oh. okay we're just going to leave the whole community behind and go find these these kids oh yeah the, I, yeah the guy yeah girl, yeah that opened the door for the CRM to be able to go, okay, we're just going to wipe the whole community out. <laughs> yeah. That, that threw me. Like, I wasn't expecting that. I, that I wasn't totally expecting yeah. that they were going to just walk away. And I also wasn't expecting that they were going to just completely eliminate that colony. And the fact that everyone that's on the way to go where, to New York has no idea that it's happened. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So all yeah, their it, friends and fan and some, I guess most of them didn't have family there, but any of their friends that they were going to school with or. And that's the other thing that, that, and I wish we had had a bit of a slower reveal of, uh, the, the kids, the fact that, uh, Hope killed this boy, this boy's mother and this boy's mother killed Hope's mother, Hope and Iris's mother. I wish we had had a little bit of a more slow reveal of that. Yeah, uh, because now we basically know. And the big question I had is, is you guys have been friends for 10 years. 
because <laughs> they were all pretty tight. You've been friends for 10 years. This has never come up in the entire <laughs> yeah, exactly. 10 years that you guys have been living in this community. The story of what happened to your parents on the night the sky fell. I have a little bit of an issue with that. So I, I started this afternoon. I mean, I, I liked it the first time I watched it. But then this afternoon, the more I started thinking about it, the more I started picking it apart. I was like, yeah, there's a lot of problems with this show. But I'm, I'm going to give them another couple episodes because I like the road trip aspect of it. I like yeah. That we yeah. have these these four kids traveling. We have this this couple that's behind them trying to catch up with them. Mm-hmm. I do think it's a little bit uh, like the 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 sisters just assume that those two are coming after them, and I that gave me a little bit of a pause because I was like, really, do you think they they would leave the entire community behind just to find just to track you down? <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. maybe again, if you have this really tight bond, but it didn't feel like they had this tight bond. No. Uh, yeah. So so yeah, there's there's some issues with it, but I, I'll give it a I'll give it a try. I'll give it a couple more episodes. Yeah, same here. Yeah, me too. I am hopeful. I I feel like the ending with them wiping out that whole colony that made me think, okay, this could be better than what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. But I'm not ready to say, oh yeah, definitely this is great. I'm cautiously optimistic, and we'll see where it goes. Awesome. So uh, with that, we'll just move on to comic news, and it's only one short one, and of course it's Walking Dead related. So this week, the Walking Dead Deluxe is coming out on Wednesday, October 7th. So when by the time you get this, it's probably going to be like Thursday. So the issue should be already out at your local comic shop, or if you wanted to order it online still, you have that possibility. So it is a new comic run of the original Walking Dead. The only difference is it's all colorized because the original series was black and white so i already have that on my pull list that's something i'm looking forward to because it's kind of just rereading the series now with a different palette because it's colorized so i enjoy that thought in that aspect so i i recommend everybody pick it up as well so with that uh we'll move on to podcast recommendations so daphne do you have any i i can recommend my Go ahead. Own. absolutely <laughs> So, uh, last month, my friend Paik and I launched a podcast called Run For Your Lives. This week, I believe we're posting episode six, which will be A Quiet Place. And we're covering monster movies, creature features, disaster flicks, a little bit of horror. We're kind of connecting things in our Run For Your Lives universe to see what we want to cover and what maybe our listeners want us to cover. And so we post new episodes every Friday night, sometimes early Saturday morning. And we're really excited. We're the first podcast on Pirate Core Entertainment. Mm-hmm. So we're very proud to be part of that awesome. family. My only recommendation, well, aside from Pirate Core, would be Ben Beck's <laughs> The Spotlight, The Celebrity Spotlight with Ben Beck. If you listen to that on the Next Level podcast, network basically he this week he actually interviewed dana de lorenzo and i know i've known dana from cons that i've gone to and i've interacted with her and she's a trip and she's a really good friend of ben so i highly recommend you listen to the this new episode that's up on the spotlight with ben back so check that out uh, the only thing I've got this week is uh, panels to pixels. We are going to start uh, on the Next Level Podcast Network. We are going to start covering The Boys season two this week. So we are definitely going to cover episodes one and two of The Boys this week. So uh, send us your feedback. Let us know uh, what you thought of The Boys. Uh, we are doing a special kind of the way we did The Witcher on this one. Mark and I, once we record, we will have seen the entire season mm-hmm. of The Boys. So you don't need to worry about spoiling us on anything. Talk about what you see that was foreshadowed in those those early episodes. And the way you can send your feedback to us is you can go to our website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. You can also go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And we've got an email address panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle in the number one at gmail.com. If you got an old rotary telephone or <laughs> your cell phone, whatever, um, you can call us up and leave us a voicemail, 845 345 
650-250-2095. And as Mark talked about earlier, we have a YouTube channel as well, which is Panels to Pixels Podcast. Go over there, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to us, and check out Panels to Pixels on YouTube. All right, and where else can listeners hear us, Steve? Well, I am uh, right here on Panels to Pixels every week. I send voicemails to various podcasts, and uh, I enjoy hearing my own voice, apparently. And, <laughs> uh, but uh, now you can hear me. My voice will pop up on different different places here and there. As you will probably next week. So, uh, yeah, I could be found right here on Panels to Pixels as well as sending out audio feedback just the same as Steve does that our friends do on their podcast. Podcast, just like Daphne, Jason on Podcastica with Walking Dead cast and House Podcastica. And you can also hear me on an, on another podcast called Adrenaline Cinema, and that can be found on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network, as well as Run For Your Lives. So that's the second one that's up on that particular network that I created. So now we have two on Pyrocore Entertainment Network. So uh, the podcast, which is Adrenaline Cinema, is a podcast about all those action movies, suspense movies, adventure films, anything that gets you, you know, your adrenaline moving or gets you itchy to move. And uh, this week, Top Gun was just released. So that was Rima, Joe, and myself. And Rima, you could find on Strange Indeed. And she does her own thing. I think they're doing Bly Mather. Bly Manor or Blythe the Manor? Haunting, the Haunting of Bly Manor. The okay, Bly there Manor. we go. Thank you for the Probably correction. next week. I think it's October 9th. I think. I can't remember the exact date. It drops later this week. Yeah. So, so this week you could hear Rima and I go into the world of Top Gun and our thoughts and our love for that particular movie. So you could send us feedback there if you want. That's pretty much easier in the sense if you could just send an email. So Adrenaline Cinema Podcast at gmail.com made it pretty simple for everybody to send anything out there you could always go to the pirate core entertainment networks website which would be pirate you could go visit adrenaline cinemas site or you could go to run for your lives run for your lives <laughs> so where you could find uh both uh adrenaline cinema and run for your lives I believe Adrenaline Cinema, you could hear on Spotify, TuneIn, and Deezer right now. We're working on Apple Podcasts as well as Google Podcasts and a whole plethora of different hosting platforms so that we could be in your ears. So we are currently working on a lot when it comes to that. So, and also next week, the following week, and if you want to go to our Facebook page, Adrenaline uh, would be facebook.com slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and you could just leave some comments or feedback for when we do Lethal Weapon, when Steve and I cover that. So, just give us your thoughts and just leave a comment. There'll definitely be a link, and there'll definitely be somewhere for you to put a comment or direct message us. Who knows? So, that's pretty much our show this week thanks everybody for listening i'm mark and i'm steve and i'm daphne and this was panels to pixels and we'll see you on the next panel thank you everybody and good night good night <laughs>